Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hugo Bernier. My company is Tahoe Ninjas. And this is a picture of me when I used to have a lot of hair. I can be reached at Twitter at uh, Bernie, a, at Bernie H and my uh, blog is TahoeNinjas.blog. I am a Microsoft uh, MVP, uh, as we mentioned before, but I'm also a proud member of the Patterns and Practices virtual team. And so if, you've, if you haven't had a chance to visit the Patterns and Practices site, there's all sorts of resources around you know, tools, uh, SDKs and things like that that you can use in your own solutions around uh, Microsoft 365 development. I put the QR code there in the corner in case you're interested. But uh, the other thing that I'm part of is, is something called the it started as a Toronto Citizen Developer User Group, uh, but we just renamed it the, the Citizen Developer User Group. Our our focus was to create you know a group that is not about selling products to people and it's not really intended for for the for the geeks it's intended for the 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 citizen developers the people that want to make a difference in their organization and they're not necessarily coders or developers but it's also uh, around having conversations with the IT decision makers and the developers around how do we empower citizen developers and organizations without creating shadow ITs so we meet the first Wednesdays of every month and the URL is at the bottom here, tcdug.com. Uh, and while the, the primary focus has been around the Power Platform, uh, we consider, uh, and I hope everyone the call agrees, that we consider Adaptive Cards absolutely a citizen development uh, resource. And that's where the idea for this web part came, came about. So the web part that you're going to see today is actually a, a sample that's already published in the the repository. I put the QR code there. The URL is way too long for me to even say it. If you are looking for that web part and you can't remember the URL, just remember to go to aka.ms slash SPFX web parts. Again, the QR code is there. And uh, so this is actually a site that we built that allows you to find all sorts of samples for SharePoint web parts uh, uh, using the SharePoint framework. And there's, as you can see, there's all sorts of samples, Angular, Blackout, React, everything. And the, the web part that's highlighted in green there is the web part that we're talking about. And as you can see, it was changed very recently, as early as, uh, well, today. And uh, that's what I'll be showing you today. So before I start, I want to say, uh, I want to thank a couple people that, uh, that sent me messages as or opened issues as early as 21 hours ago to tell me that the sample web part that I had uh, created, and Paul Schifflin also created a version of this web part, they were broken. Or more specifically, the adaptive card template uh, component was broken because of the May 2020 update. So uh, I, I fixed it at the last minute last night. I must admit that it's a total hack, my fix, uh, but I, I do plan on updating. As soon as there's an updated NPM package, I will update the, uh, the adaptive card templating uh, functionality. But you can, you can use the new adaptive card templates. It mostly works right now, but you can also use the, the old adaptive card template uh, schema. All right, let's show you the web part to get started. Uh, so this is a SharePoint framework web part, and it was totally built as an example on how to use adaptive cards in SharePoint. This is not really intended for for to, to be used in production, although if you if you choose to do that, you're more than welcome to do so. What we did do though behind the scene is that uh, I created a adaptive card component a React component that you'll be able to use in your own web parts. And the component, what it does behind the scene is it makes sure that it looks, the, the adaptive cards are rendered in a way that looks and feels like it belongs to SharePoint. It uses the fabric or fluid styles now, uh, but it's also uh, obviously fluent. responsive <laughs> and, and reacts to uh, fluid. It, it is yes. confusing with fluid and fluent. The, it uses the That's fluent right. design, right? Um, <laughs> OK. <laughs> But it's a uh, it's also designed to to changing themes and and 
uh, section colors of uh, the web part. So when you drop the web part in, and this is actually the web part that's really running right now from, from my computer uh, right here. And as you can see, it's running. Uh, when you drop the web part, it'll say, hey, let's get this configured. You need a template. And uh, what we did here is we made it possible for you to pick from uh, enter JSON here or enter a URL. For this sample, I'm going to use some JSON. I've prepared some JSON. And, you know, try to do some shameless plugs here of, you know, here's where to go get the, the schema. Here's to get more information. We really wanted to make this as easy as possible for, for people to use. So let's get my first sample. I believe that's the right one. And we've made it easy here for you to edit with some uh, syntax highlighting. And if I paste that and the demo gods are with me, this should be working. Yes, it does work. OK, great. Uh, and while we're there, let's just show you how we can actually use, if I edit the section here and I change the, the background, well, it's probably not a very exciting demo here, uh, but the background is designed to react to uh, to changing themes. You'll notice there's a little, I have a little issue here with the highest contrast, uh, the strong contrast backgrounds with the, uh, the buttons are actually the same color as the background. This is something I'd love to talk to someone in the adaptive card team to, to align the, the themes so that we can do something that's uh, high contrast and uh, good for accessibility. And that web part also works if you go in uh, a high contrast mode. And if the web part wants to work, you'll notice here adaptive card host. And if I take the same JSON that I pasted before, you should see that we have now a high contrast uh, web part that also responds to the changing themes. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the other thing that I can do, again, I've, I've got some other samples here. So let's use a sample with uh, data because we do support adaptive card templating. And what we do here is we detect if you're using adaptive card templating, we just kind of try to help you. So if you if you're using this, we say turn on adaptive card templating. And then from this, what we've done is we've actually given you the option to pick data from JSON, pick data from a list on your SharePoint site, or pick data from a URL. We are planning on adding things like uh, dynamic data sources, you know, so that we can have dynamic data from other web parts. But let's just start with getting some data. And let me know if I'm going too fast. I hope that everyone can see uh, my screen. I do like my, my resolution to be really high. It's like 4,000 by 3,000. So I had to zoom in a lot to prepare for this demo. So if everything goes well. And you know, Matt, you're like the, the adaptive card equivalent of Hello World, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> At, at uh, conferences, so, sometimes I have to take selfies with people because they're like, wait, I didn't know you were a real person. You know, I'll have my like conference <laughs> badge and then I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> That's right. So if I uh, if I just to prove that I'm not lying here, I just changed the data uh, and I think I copied it. Uh, this is a picture of Paul. I think Paul is in the call. Uh, I want to uh, shout out to Paul because Paul actually took this a sample web part that I've created and he really quickly created a React hook version of the exact same web part. And so if you're uh, interested in learning about React hooks and understanding what's the difference between React and React hooks, the great thing to do is just go look at my web part and look at Paul's uh, web part and you can, you'll be able to see the differences. Thanks to Paul for his help with this. And he's also added some of the cool features like loading from URLs. All right, let's go uh, look another sample here. Um, so if I change my template here to something really boring, uh, I was not, I, I didn't have a lot of inspiration when I created this sample template here. You can actually go pick from a list and you can get a data and that's kind of hard to show here uh, at this resolution, but it's actually giving me a list of 
hold on. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can I can show you this. So I can get the list of documents here, and this data is actually coming from SharePoint. Now, to be perfectly honest, I would never recommend to to use adaptive cards for some doing something this boring. You know, there's in SharePoint, you have the ability to use list formatting and view formatting to do pretty much the exact same thing. But if you were inspired and you wanted to create a crazy template, you know, that at, at some point you'll reach the limitations of what list and view formatting is, is capable in SharePoint, but you can absolutely do it using adaptive card templating. Uh, so hopefully you have a better imagination than I do when it comes to, to creating templates. All right. Anybody want to see some code? So I, I actually took screenshots of the code because uh, demoing code in Visual Studio Code is, is always painful. I'm going to try to go as quickly as possible. Again, if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me. But let's get started. So the first thing is in the, the project itself, I've created a web part uh, called Adaptive Card Post Web Part. If you, and we'll, we'll talk about this later, but you absolutely have the ability to take the, the component that I've created and you can drop that in your own web part if you want to. Uh, but this is the web part I just demoed. This is how it works. So the first thing that we do in this web part is we actually make the, the web part theme uh, aware uh, by giving it a theme provider and by getting the theme variant from the, the theme provider. And then we subscribe to an event so that when people change the themes or they change the background colors, the web part is automatically notified and it just makes the web part redraw. And then we just, when we call the adaptive card host component, we just pass it the theme variant and uh, the component will take care of, of applying the, the themes. Another thing that we do in this web part is that anything that's intensive uh, in terms of resources, like for example, we have the code editor property pane that shows up. You probably don't want to load that every single time someone is looking at a web part, especially if they're just looking at it in view mode, not edit mode. So there's this feature in uh, SharePoint framework web parts that allows you to defer loading the resources your property pane needs to only when you need to display the property pane. It's a kind of crazy idea, but it, it works perfectly. So that's what we do here is we just kind of do uh, import the, the code editor in this case, and we only do that when you display the web part. And then we just set that in the property pane. Now, the component itself is really what's responsible for rendering the body of the web part. So the adaptive card host at TSX is where the logic for rendering the, the what you saw. and you know, what we do is we actually, if we need a template, we use the, the PNP reusable control placeholder component that will tell you, hey, you need to give us a template. If we need the data, we do the same thing. We say, hey, you selected, you want to use adaptive card templating, but you didn't give us data yet. So please give us that. And then this is really where all the hard work gets done. This is the component that uh, that we built that is is really a wrapper around the uh, the adaptive card npm packages but it's it it is designed to work within sharepoint so it takes the template json it takes the data it takes a flag whether we use templating or not and it takes the theme uh, variant but the other thing that it does is it actually will bubble up any action elements in the um, adaptive card. So if someone clicks on a button or a link or something like that, your the web part that is calling the, the component will actually get notified and you can do whatever you'd like with that. So in the adaptive card control, and this is again the control that we've designed for you to embed it in, in your own web parts if you want to, or you can use the web part that I'm demoing. We do a few things. So the first thing is we use the adaptive card. And now this is this is really stressful because I got Matt on the call and he's probably looking at my code saying, what were you thinking? <laughs> so we create the adaptive card. We tell it to use the fabric controls, which is a great, uh, there's an NPM package from the adaptive cards team that, that, that allows you to load fabric controls or fluent or fluid, whatever it's called now. And then we just parse the card. 
in the web part because we wanted to to support pretty much all the, the every schema or every element of the adaptive card. We also use uh, markdown support uh, because you know adaptive cards support markdown. So we actually just after we've parsed the adaptive card, we go back in and if we find any HTML that has markdown in it, we render HTML and we we give you some nice HTML rendering. And uh, this is the part here where uh, we did all the work around capturing all the themes. And what we've tried to do is, and this is honestly, I just manually went theme by theme and I tried to set up the host configuration to say, these are the colors that we need. And so there's a, there's a few sections, for example, as you can see here, right here. Oh, it's not letting me highlight, so we'll just, we'll just skip that for now. This part here, for some reason, I was not able to grab the success text from, from the SharePoint uh, context. But, you know, in general, the theme works. Again, we do some, have some issues with the, the button color being the same color as the background color in high contrast environments. But uh, I'm sure it's, it's probably a matter of something I didn't know how to fix. And then the other thing that we had in this in this uh, component is we had done a property field view picker that was responsible for picking the view from your list from your document library. We've since then actually taken this out of the code sample and we've actually move, moved it as a PMP reusable control. So the PMP reusable controls, if you haven't used that yet, you can go to this long URL here, uh, or you can again go to the, the aka.ms slash M365 PMP, where all the PMP initiatives are listed. But this is a library, or this is a package, sorry, that you can add in your SharePoint projects to use all sorts of controls. And, uh, you know, but wait, if you order now, you'll also get in the, in the future, in the near future, I'm planning on publishing the adaptive card control for SharePoint that you just saw inside the web part. I'm planning on posting it as a PMP reusable control. So for you to, to use adaptive cards in your SharePoint projects, you won't have to copy the code. You'll just use the PMP uh, library uh, using the package command here. I'm totally planning on updating this web part. Well, of course, as soon as I can do a, a permanent fix for adaptive card templating, uh, I will do that. But in, in the plans are is to add access to the service. Also, our intention was to add the, the card editor right into the web part. And I totally dig the uh, creating a card from an image. So I might have to borrow that and put that in the web part. I'm always looking for ideas and inspirations. The, the goal here is to create something that will be useful for the community. So if you have any feedback, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. That's pretty much it for me, Matt, if you if anybody yeah. has questions. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you covered the end about just yeah making a reusable control. I think that's uh, that's cool. I, I particularly loved it, the thorough attention to detail you put to walk people through it. For example, detecting when it looks like a template, the configuration options were great, including the additions Paul made to load from URL. I mean, that was a, it looked like a pretty solid, thorough user experience. Thank you.